So today what I want to talk about is um, electric fences and how to keep your beehive safe from predators, like primarily bears. Uh, we are up in far western Wisconsin, just outside the Twin Cities area. Uh, in fact, oop, right down there is the uh, Kinniakinnick River. Um, I'll explode the view from a uh, drone perspective and kind of give you an idea where I'm at. But um, I'm under some power lines. This is a land use agreement, which uh, I'll provide you the link down below of a nice template for uh, land use. Uh, the nice thing with beekeeping is a lot of people just want to help the bees. And so I've found it no trouble at all finding property to um, put apiaries on. And so this one I'm just starting off. But yesterday I visited um, one of our host hives, which I've talked about before. And what that is, is people, um, Ultimately, they're renting a beehive from us and we provide them honey at the end of the year and then they take advantage of helping the bees and pollinating some of their, their uh, gardens and apple trees and such. But today, I thought it would be a good idea to, because uh, I had a bear at one of these host of hives yesterday. Luckily, it didn't destroy the hive, just top, topped off the honey super, ate all the honey and, excuse me, and, uh, simply um, took off with the honey so but the bees were still in the box which was great and so today I'm gonna show you the setup that I use uh, I'm gonna have links for every product down below uh, you can check them out uh, but I found after several different field attempts uh, what I find probably the most economical way to put up an electric fence around your apiary uh, some of my other videos, you can see the ones I've got at my house, which are more permanent. Uh, so I spent much more time and energy um, building those. So I'm going to show you what the setup I have right now. These are, you know, this is the beginning of uh, apiary. So this will be able to grow over time. And it's all powered from that little guy right there. So let's get started. I'm going to go through tool list uh, what we use or what I use in this situation um, and like I said there will be every one of these products that I'm displaying or an alternative will be linked right below so check that out so what we use here on, on this uh, system setup is this Gallagher solar fencer and one thing when you're searching for fencers what is important is to pay attention to this right here and these are your jewels. And so that's the amount of power that the system can deliver to uh, your fence. And in this case, it's four miles. And to take into consideration that four miles is pretty much a weedless fence. So there, and, the, and why that's important is anytime a weed or branch comes in contact with that fence, it is pulling some of the power off of that fencer or that fence line. And so what it does, if you think about, if you've got a bunch of weeds, and let's, let's just, for simple math, say every solid weed connection is 10%. And here you get nine of them, you're down to hardly anything. And I mean, it gets to the point where you could pretty much touch it. And you'd feel it, and it wouldn't feel great. Um, but it would uh, certainly uh, reduce its effectiveness. And so here, uh, on this particular model, this Gallagher, um, it ultimately shows you, you know, so it gives you kind of an idea of a real weedy situation and then uh, a weedless system. Um, and in that case, that's where you get those four miles and then in a typical system, it's 0.6 miles. And so in my situation, I'm gonna have some weeds here. This I intend on growing. We are on, you know, I don't know if you saw that fence or the uh, power lines, but we've got the ability of going pretty much anywhere we want down here with the customer or with the uh, landowner's approval. And so in this situation, uh, we're gonna fill those couple spots up with some hives, uh, probably go a little bit that way, and then uh, down this way, kind of in front of the truck. And so I intend on using that little fencer right there, which is this Gallagher, to cover ultimately probably up to 
20 to 50 hives in here and then I'd need another one or a bigger one. Um, I'm gonna keep this little guy um, for this spot and if I need more, I'll end up ultimately using another one. And the reason is, is they're cost effective, which you'll see in those links below, I think. And I don't remember the exact amount that I got, I don't want to quote the wrong number, but um, I can use it anywhere. Um, especially with our little host hives, which is just one. And the reason we don't have them around like the one that the bear attacked was uh, because the um, it's just not cost effective. You, you know, we charge $59 a month. You know, this setup here is probably roaming around, it's under $200. Um, and so you can see why we don't necessarily use them for those. We very rarely have bear attacks on a single hive. So, you know, we roll the dice, but so what i'm going to talk about here then is the products again so this is the fencer we use we'll go over kind of how that works these are the insulators we use so you use fiberglass rods in this case it's a a four foot fiberglass rod um, and for pounding it in the ground there's these little caps you put this little cap on uh, and then ultimately you need a hammer and you hammer it into the ground boom 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 so however many you need, where you need them, uh, they're very handy. You can see in this case, I've used four of them. And then for the solar fencer, uh, which is currently on, it's flashing when it's on, uh, it's a metal post. And the reason you use that metal post is it grounds the fencer as well. And so in my case, I've got a painted one. It's a brand new post. I think this post was like $3. Once again, I'll provide the link down below. Uh, but I made sure that uh, the contact that this thing makes on here, so you just simply unscrew this, so we can do this with one hand. But it, it um, can slide up and down the fence. And so you just tighten it down, and um, it provides connection to earth. And then you've got your positive or hot, or whatever you want to call it, with this jumper, which comes with this uh, Gallagher kit. And so, as you can see, then I bring all of these leads back. This is actually one continuous loop. Um, and then what I do is I provide this little metal splice kit uh, for good connection. And the reason is, is if you look at this wire, you can see those metal strands there. I'm not going to, well, here, I'm going to shut it off. There, it's off. Should we do a touch? Touch test. Yeah, it's off. Okay, so um, you can see right in, it's so darn shaky. It's hard to focus on this. Okay, right there. So you can see those metal strands right in there. That's what actually provides the shock or the um, exposure of this braided line. It's a, uh, I think it's a five, five strand and in that case it's five metal strands going through the fence itself um, and then these are these little insulators which work out great because all you have to do is unloosen them up and you can slide them up or down and you, know, you can put as many of them on here as you want so find that to be really effective um, um, and height wise I like to keep one low for like raccoons skunks you know it comes by maybe smells it gets shocked on its nose and then the high one for uh, any bigger critters like a bear you know they're gonna come in here smell it and get zapped and run the heck out of here so let's go over the products again so we were so it's this zebra uh, rod post insulator uh, that comes with 25 of them in the bag now uh, this is that five strand uh, wire that was or um, poly line that I was talking about and then this is also zebra uh, and it is the splicer. So, um, and then these are the tools that we use for it. This is used for the splicer, it's just a nut driver. In my case, it's like a 10 in one screwdriver. I just pull that out and you got a nut driver. Here's the front end. Hammer, wire cutter, that's all you need. So this is all you need other than, I don't have the metal posts in here, uh, to put in a really nice effective and cost effective um, fencer for your array. So, or I'm sorry, for your, for your array, for your um, beehives. So if you're looking for a, 
a cost-effective system for protecting your beehives, this is a great option. Uh, there are a lot of options out there. I preferably am a little biased just because I've done a ton of shopping. Uh, it's been about, you know, I probably looked into the smaller systems for about a year. Uh, and this is what I ended up settling on. And so I'm not sponsored by any of it. Uh, some of the links below will uh, tie to my uh, Amazon associate. So I make like 20 cents or something when, if you buy it, which helps support me, helps support the sh um, this show and, and make sure that I can keep providing good content. So thanks again for watching and hope you enjoy it. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It's, uh, you don't even have to hit the bell. If you hit the bell, you get notified when new videos come up. Uh, I would appreciate it, but as long as you just subscribe, it's fine. If you don't subscribe, shame on you. Just kidding. See you later.